He is risen. He is risen indeed. Blessings to you this Easter day. When Mary Magdalene and Mary went to the tomb to see Jesus, it must have been very much like this nave, empty and quiet. But suddenly there was a great earthquake and the angel of the Lord appeared to the two Marys and said to them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And those words of assurance echo down to us to this very day. We will not be afraid. Because Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus' victory over death and the grave, over sin and evil, is our victory. Jesus' resurrection is our resurrection. And this day we will indeed rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter to you all from myself, from Pastor Micah, from our dog Henry. <laughs> we know that Easter looks a little bit different today than it normally would. Uh, but we do want to remind you that worship is still happening. We invite you to worship with our Synod and with Bishop Goal this morning at 10 a.m. at the Delaware, Maryland Synod Facebook page and at the Delaware, Maryland Synod YouTube channel. All of those links that you need, links to bulletins and links to the services themselves, are in the email that you received this morning. We want to also remind you that we have set up the Salem Easter Fund. That link has also been sent to you in the email this morning. If you would like to, instead of donating lilies for our sanctuary, if you would like to make a donation to the Second Coat Fund, to Catonsville Emergency Assistance, or to Lutheran World Relief, in honor, in celebration, or in memory of a loved one, you can do that through the form that has been sent to you in your email. Uh, please know that uh, Pastor Sarah and I are missing you very, very much. Uh, you remain in our prayers, and we ask that you would continue to pray for us and for all your sisters and brothers here at Salem. He is risen! He is risen indeed! Gospel reading for this Easter day is from the 28th chapter of Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. At first, Easter was a bit of a mixed bag. A day where grief and joy, fear and hope, exhaustion and excitement, death and life were all tangled up with each other. 
There was no hallelujah chorus that first Easter. No Easter lilies. No banners or processionals. No choir anthems or preludes on the organ. No music to speak of at all, actually. That first Easter, there were three things. There was an empty tomb. There was a proclamation. He is not here. He has been raised just as he said. And there were a couple of faithful women. Despite the simplicity of that first century Easter, our Easter celebrations here in this century are quite a bit bigger and busier and louder than that of the first. And why shouldn't they be? The good news of Christ's resurrection, the incredible, liberating, life-giving news that Christ had put death in its grave, that news is worth all the fanfare and all the celebration we can muster. And yet, here we find ourselves, tuning into worship from our own homes. No Easter lilies, no banners or processionals, no choir anthems or preludes. In fact, Easter in 2020 looks a lot more like that first Easter than perhaps we would like it to. Today is, in many ways, a very similar mixed bag. Many of us are holding the tension between grief and joy, fear and hope, exhaustion and excitement, death and life. And while we would all prefer to be gathered together in one packed sanctuary, scooching over to make room for our neighbors and fanning ourselves with our bulletins while we listen to Mary Miller and the choir move us to tears with beautiful music, instead, perhaps we can take this experience of stripping Easter down to the studs and find some meaning in it. Because Easter really comes down to those three things. An empty tomb. A proclamation. He is not here. Jesus has been raised just as he said. And faithful people to hear and carry that proclamation to the rest of the world. And we do indeed have all three of those things. Dear Church, if we were never able to gather in person again, if we never sang the words, Jesus Christ is risen today, if we never smelled another Easter lily, the tomb would still be empty. Because Christ's resurrection is not beholden to or confined by our sanctuaries, our hymnals, or our pews. And we can know that, and we can understand that, and we can still feel grieved today. Jesus' resurrection is not a band-aid for all our sadness and our fear. If it was, then the resurrection account we hear in our gospel today wouldn't be filled with the phrase, do not be afraid. Christ's resurrection does not magically take away the pain and the brokenness of this world as much as we wish that were so. Christ's resurrection does not change the fact that our world is still battling a deadly virus and that we cannot physically gather together for the foreseeable future. But Christ's resurrection does change us and the way in which we face the troubles and dangers of this world. So the women left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell Jesus' disciples. Fear and great joy. Those two feelings were tangled up with each other that first Easter, and they can be today, too. Because we can be afraid about what's happening in our world and 
joyful, that there is no force on heaven or on earth that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus through the power of the resurrection. We can be disappointed that we are not gathered in our sanctuary and filled with the hope that one day we will be. We can be grieved for those who have died, for those who are dying, and rejoice in the knowledge that death does not have the final word and that God promises life eternal through the power of the cross and the empty tomb. The tension of this particular Easter Sunday is almost palpable. Grief and joy, fear and hope, exhaustion and excitement, death and life. We're holding it all and we're vacillating between so many different emotions. But in the midst of all the tension, we remember what Easter is. It's an empty tomb. It's a proclamation. He is not here. He has been raised. And it's faithful people, God's people, you people, to hear and proclaim and share that good news. Today, our sanctuaries are as empty as tombs because Jesus is not there. Jesus is here in our living rooms as we worship. And Jesus is there with the sick and with the dying. Jesus is there with the caregivers and the essential workers. Jesus is with the lonely and the isolated and the depressed. Jesus is with the hungry, the houseless, the anxious, the vulnerable. Jesus is with those who are grieving and with those who are rejoicing. Jesus is with me and Jesus is with you. Jesus is not in our sanctuaries because that's not where God's people are at the moment. And Jesus is always with his people. And no virus, no power of death, no fear, no disappointment, no grief will prevent Jesus from being with the world he so loves. In life, in death, in life beyond death, Christ accompanies us. That is the proclamation we are called to share and rejoice in today, even and especially while we are holding that holy tension of fear and great joy. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. <laughs>